Hey guys, welcome to another C++ and game tutorial. Today I'm going to be teaching you about the size of operator and uh, a little bit of its usage. Uh, we're going to be learning about two new C functions, memset and memcopy. And I'll also teach you about buffers, but you pretty much already know what buffers are, so that should be pretty easy. So you'll notice, first of all, I'm not using system pause anymore. Instead, I wrote my own little printf, enter any key to quit, and then c in a temp variable. Uh, the reason I'm not using system pause anymore is because it's just a really bad idea to use the system command. I've taught it to you so far just because it's a simple way to get this working. Uh, but the actual system command, it's not cross-platform. It's really risky. You can It can cause some pretty bad bugs. So we should just really avoid using system at all costs and instead write our own functions. If, if getcha works on your computer, you could use getcha instead of in, and then you'd have pretty much the same exact thing. So let's go ahead and get started with the size of variable. If you remember from the um, the advanced variables tutorial, an integer is four bytes. Let's make an integer a. This is four bytes. We have a char c. This is one byte. A double d. This is eight bytes. Uh, float f. This is four bytes. And remember, you can Google all these and, and determine how many bytes they are, and you can also de uh, determine what uh, values they can hold based on uh, the number of bytes. For instance, a char is 8 bytes, or sorry, a char is 1 byte, which is 8 bits, so you get 2 to the 8 um, maximum values, which is 256. And since a char can hold negative numbers, it's actually negative 128 to positive 127. But you hopefully remember that. Let's actually see out the size in bytes of these variables to the screen. If we don't want to go look online for them, we can actually see out what they are right to the screen. So we can say see out size of, this is the size of operator. It's not actually a function, but you use it like a function. Uh, but that's not super important for you to know. So we could say size of a indel. And we're going to say this is int. So we should get that the size of int is 4, which stands for 4 bytes. So let's go ahead and run this and see if that works. So we see int is 4 bytes. That's all there is to it. It's basically, this is something that kind of happens before it compiles your code. It basically looks at this and says, okay, this is an integer. I know an integer is 4 bytes, so I'm going to replace this with a 4. And then when your code actually runs, it's going to look like this. It's going to see out a 4. So we can do this. Uh, you don't have to type C out size of A. Uh, you don't have to type the variable. You can also just type size of int. That'll work as well. So let's see all the size of the different variables. We'll say int char uh, double and float. And I'll do, I'll go ahead and use the variables instead of the types. C, D, F, and we'll go ahead and put A here just for consistency. So now when I run it, we should get the correct uh, sizes for all the variables. So see we get int is 4, char is 1, double is 8, float is 4, and that is correct. If you're on a 64-bit machine, integers or floats may for some reason be 8 bytes. Uh, it's not exactly consistent. It's not always going to be the same, uh, so you never know. Just don't freak out if it's not exactly the same, but it probably is the same as mine. So that's one way to use it. We can also see out the size of an array, but only if the array is allocated or is initialized, or sorry, declared in the same function uh, that we created it, or if it's like a global array or something like that. So if we say int uh, a or my buffer, we're going to call this a buffer, and it's going to be 10,000 then we can see out the size of this buffer. Now a buffer is just an array, pretty much. It's just a, a storage unit. It lets you store data in a, a big block of memory. So this is gonna give us a block of memory that is 10,000 integers in size, which is 10,000 times four bytes. So let's go ahead and see out the size of our buffer. So size of my buffer, like that. And that should give us 40,000 since it's 4 bytes times 10,000 for 10,000 integers. So see our buffer is 40,000 bytes in size. So if we were tr for instance reading in a file or something uh, that was less than 40,000 bytes we could fit the whole thing in this buffer or if it wasn't big enough we could just make this bigger. You know we could we could store uh, all, all sorts of things in a buffer. It's just it's just an array. So if you ever hear somebody say a buffer uh, what they what they're basically saying is an array. So we can do that. Now keep in mind, if you pass my buffer to a function and then you call size of in that function on the, uh, the my buffer that was passed by reference, it's not going to give you 40,000. It's actually going to give you probably four bytes, uh, which is not the actual size of the buffer. And I'll teach you why that happens uh, whenever we go over pointers and the stack versus the heap. Uh, but just know that if you're going to use it like this, you, you need to be using it in the same uh, function where you declared it 
or within the same scope, meaning if I declare it up here, that's okay. But if I if I declare it here and I have another function and I pass this in, then it's it's not going to work. So let's actually use size of practically, other than just figuring out the size of the buffer. So let's try using what's called the memset uh, memset function. So the reason we might, we might want to use it is to, for instance, initialize a buffer of chars. So first let's see out the buffer and let's make it only 100 so it's easier to see out. So for int i equals 0, i is less than, and we want to put 100 here, but now we have two copies of 100. If I come in here later and change this to 200, now I've got a bug in my code. So let's go ahead and make a constant int buffer size equals uh, 100 up at the top. So now if we ever want to change the size of the buffer, we just change this variable and we're not going to have any bugs. And remember, if you're making a, const a constant int, a good naming convention is all capitals with underscores in between the words. So I++, plus plus, and that's our for loop, and we're just going to see out my buffer, buffer I. So we're just going to see out the whole thing with no end L. And we should get a bunch of garbage, right? Because this, uh, this buffer has, excuse me, has a hundred characters in it, but none of them have been initialized. So they're all just set to random memory. And if we print it out, there we go, we just get a bunch of gobbledygook up here. Just a bunch of random memory being interpreted as characters. It's whatever was in memory whenever we allocated uh, this this 100-byte uh, buffer. Whatever was in memory when we allocated it, that's what got printed to the screen. So what if we want it to be all zeros or something, or, or all A's? Well, we could use a for loop, like we could loop through it and set each one individually, but another neat way using a C function is to use the memset function. And we say memset, and then what we do is we say what buffer we want to memset. So we're going to say I'm memsetting my buffer. And then we say what value do we want to set it to. Now if we wanted to make it zero, we would just type a zero here. Or if we wanted to do a specific character, for instance the letter capital A, I could do the capital A here like that. So it's going to set each byte to A, and now we have to tell it the size of the buffer. Whenever you pass an array to the to a function, for instance this memset function, the array doesn't know or the function doesn't know how big the array is. You can try passing it to your own functions, you know, you're not going to know uh, the size uh, unless you specifically, you know, type in buffer size here and you, and you remember what it is. But but functions that you haven't programmed, uh, they're not going to know the size of the buffer, so you have to tell them how big it is. Now, it's memset only operates on bytes, so if this is an int, we probably don't want to do this. If this is an int buffer, we don't want to do this, but a char buffer would work okay. And we could set everything to A's, and we need to say what the size of the buffer is. So we could say, remember like I said, we could say size of my buffer, and that's going to work. That's going to give us the size of the buffer in bytes, but a better way, I think, to do it is the, the better way I think uh, you should do it is to take char here and put it in the size of. So we're going to say the size of a char, which is one byte, times uh, buffer size like this. And this is going to do the exact same thing, but the reason I want you to do it this way is because this is how you're going to be doing it if you pass it, oops, if you pass it into, an, into another function. So if you just do it like this uh, for consistency, you'll never make the mistake of trying to use size of my buffer in another function. So we know size of char is 1, so we could type a 1 here, but the problem is if we run uh, our, our game on a computer where a char isn't a size of 1, then it's going to completely break. Now that's probably never ever going to happen, but it could. So we might as well just say size of char here. So now if we run it, we should get all A's. And there we go. If we zoom in, we'll see that the whole buffer has been uh, replaced by A's. It has set each individual byte to an A. And now this is actually probably going to be faster than using a for loop. Uh, to, to set the A's. Now if you use a for loop, there's a chance your compiler is going to probably optimize it to do basically exactly this, but this is pretty much the fastest way to set a block of memory, or so I'm told. Now if we change this to an integer, then this is going to work, uh, but what we need to do is change this to size of int. So we probably aren't going to want to put an A here. Uh, we could, let's go ahead and see what happens if we do. Uh, we could set each individual byte of the integer to an A, and if we, let's see, see out, and uh, we can really play around with this. So an integer is four bytes, right? So if you have four of the letter A, you get this number. Now you could work out the binary number uh, that is, 
that is the result of this and you would see that it is correct uh, but this isn't very useful uh, the only time you would ever really use memset with an integer array is if you were trying to make it all zeros uh, because we can set each individual byte to zero like that and that would totally work and it, it's going to be fine so if we run it now we should get all zeros there we go we got all zeros and it's it's just a little easier than doing a for loop and it's actually uh, supposedly it can be much faster but it's not guaranteed to be faster like a lot of this stuff it's not always guaranteed to be faster the best chance the best uh, way to determine if it's faster is to just profile it yourself so there's one other function i want to show you and it's the mem copy so let's make two buffers well let's actually keep this uh to all zeros and let's make another buffer so int my buffer two buffer size so they're going to have the same size but we want uh let's say Let's say, uh, let's mem set my buffer to, let's mem set it to a bunch of uh, ones or something. So we're going to get um, four one bytes, which is going to give us a pretty big number. And if we print out both of these, let's go ahead and print them out separated by spaces and indels. See out indel. See out indel. And then we'll see out the second buffer. So this is going to be my buffer two. All right, so we're going to basically we're making two buffers. One is all zeros. The other is some whatever number is four one bytes all together and interpreted as an int. And we're going to print them both out and see what they look like. So let's go ahead and run it. All right, the first buffer, as we can see, is all zeros, and it turns out the number that is uh, four one bytes together is one six eight four three zero zero nine so you can actually calculate that yourself what is four one bytes it looks like this zero 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 one and it's this copied four times so this is the 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 integer variable we made when we called this m set because th this mem set because remember mem set operates on bytes so it set each byte to one and this is the binary number for one so if you plug this into a binary converter a binary to decimal converter or if you do the math yourself, which will probably take a while, you will see that indeed uh, the number that we got uh, whenever we printed it out, this uh, 16843 or whatever, is that number. So you know how to operate on bytes now. You're getting pretty smart. Uh, let's go ahead and use the mem copy. So let's basically take uh, buffer 2 and let's copy it over buffer 1, or just my buffer. So to do that, we could use a for loop, like I said before, but we could also use memcopy, which copies one buffer over another buffer. So the first one is the destination buffer, the one we are copying to. So we're going to copy over my buffer. We want to replace this buffer of zeros with the same values in this buffer of the big number. Then we do a comma, and then we say the source buffer. So we're copying from my buffer to to my buffer and then a comma, and then the size. So the size of the copy, the amount of data we want to copy, is going to be this size of int times buffer size, which is the size of either one of the buffers. They're both the exact same size. So now when we run this, it's going to work. And there we go. Now, as you can see, I'm printing out both arrays here, separated by an indel, and they both have the exact same values. Now, you're probably not going to use this much other than maybe to uh, not use a for loop, you know, to make, make it easy and maybe a little faster. But you probably will be using it uh, whenever we actually do the voxel engine stuff. And it's actually just good to know this stuff. This is kind of some systems level uh, some systems programming level stuff that it's, that's good to know. And if you ever want to learn C, you're going to use this a lot and my walls are making noises that kind of scared me a little bit and okay so that's about it uh comment in the description if this confused you at all again you're probably not going to use memset or memcopy much but now you understand an application of the size of operator uh, and you know what the size of operator does and you understand what a buffer is and we will definitely be using buffers extensively in the voxel engine thanks guys have a great day